Run. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the very final On The Run for 2022. And what a huge On The Run we have. So let's get straight into it. We had our mad Christmas party last Friday at Grand Lapa in Macau. So thank you very much to our sponsors, our platinum sponsors, IGT and Light and Wonder, as well, of course, as our wonderful venue sponsors, Artisan Grand Lapa in Macau. That was fantastic. Now let's go through the headlines for the week. So on Friday last week, we had the government come out and make the amazing statement that they expect 50 to 80% of Macau to get COVID. Yes, COVID zero is done. It's over. And we've got the letter rip strategy going on now both on the mainland and in Macau, of course, too, because Macau always follows the mainland. So it's just been a complete 180. Home isolation now for positive cases, reduced entry requirements, a key tracking app in the mainland has been uh, has been retired. Uh, Hong Kong has removed the zero plus three. It's now zero plus zero. Song Wai Kit, the president of the Macau Responsible Gaming Association, came out and as reported in IAG this week, said, come on, let's open to Hong Kong. Let's open Macau. So a hell of a lot's happened in the last week. It's a complete 180 and that's a good thing. Uh, it is still a 24-hour NAT test requirement between Macau and Zhuhai in both directions, but expect that to change soon. In fact, expect everything to change soon. Our headline on Monday was that the government came out and said in Macau again, said that they want exclusive foreigner-only gaming zones for this up to 5% reduction in GGR charges, not tax. Um, but I did an opinion piece during the week. You can look it up on IAG and calculated that this difference it would be absolutely negligible and the costs of setting up such a zone would be more than the actual savings to the concessionaires. And I've actually spoken to the senior leadership of some of the concessionaires and at least one has said, ideally, we would just ignore this completely. Uh, it, it is a net negative um, to us. Tuesday, the headline was that Macau casinos still are requiring a health code at their doors for people to get in, despite the Health Bureau coming out on Friday and saying it's no longer required. We've asked the DICJ for comment. We've received no comment. We've asked them again. They've shuffled us across to another part of the DICJ. We're still waiting to hear back from them. But there is no need for casinos in Macau to be asking for a health code at their door. It is not a legal requirement anymore, but the DICJ is telling them to do it. So come on, DICJ, let's get moving. Let's get Macau going. Uh, our headline on uh, Wednesday was that the new concession agreements will be signed uh, Friday, Friday, the 16th of December. We're expecting that to happen in the afternoon. So that again is great news. We can start 1st of January, 2023, a new 10-year period, a new Macau. Our Thursday uh, headline, our lead story, uh, was from Bloomberg, experts shocked by new China let it rip COVID zero ex exit strategy. As I said before, a complete about face and uh, COVID is going like wildfire through, particularly Beijing at the moment. A lot of people staying home, a lot of people scared because the last three years the China government's been saying COVID is bad, COVID is scary. And now all of a sudden it's, oh, COVID is not so bad after all. But people have had three years of being indoctrinated that COVID is so bad. So people are worried. And yes, COVID is going to go through China like a wildfire, like it did uh, through the West. It had to happen at some point and it's going to happen now. So hopefully there's a minimal loss of life. Hopefully it's not too bad, but it's something I think that we need to go through. And what else happened during the week? Well, uh, O Media, the parent company of Inside Asian Gaming, launched a new brand, Macau CSR. Please go and visit macaucsr.com and sign up to the free weekly newsletter. That'll be launching on 1st of January, and uh, it will be covering all the CSR efforts of major companies in Macau. Look for the pink and blue logo. And we've been working for nearly two years on research and development to set up that new brand. It's going to be a big new brand covering non-gaming, diversification, 
Commission and all the CSR efforts that the concessionaires have been required to do under the new gaming law and under the retendering process. Um, please catch the December issue of IAG if you can. It's a bumper 148-page Philippine special covering lots of properties in the Philippines. We tend to do this for our December issue, and it's a great issue, so please do uh, go and take a look. Go to asgam.com and click on magazine articles, and they're all there. You can go through the flip book, or you can contact us for a physical copy if you really want one. Over to Japan now. Well, Japan was the big thing in 2018, 2019, 2020. It's calmed down now, but we still get news out of Japan, and IAG still does have a Japan bureau. We don't do as much as we used to do, but we publish in Japanese. The Osaka government came out and said this week that the Yumashima IR can succeed without Chinese players. Well, he has to say that, doesn't he? He has no choice. First of all, nobody's being really allowed to leave China at the moment. We don't know how long that's going to go for. Hopefully not too long with the abolition of COVID zero. But nevertheless, I think we all understand the tension between Japanese and Chinese, and it would be a political suicide for uh, there be to an admission that the Os Osaka IR was reliant on Chinese. So he has to say that. We also heard that a decision on the IR approval by the end of this year would be hard, according to the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure, Transport and Tourism. That's the ministry that makes the decision. I mean, everything goes so slowly in Japan. Even Macau, not famous for its government action, not famous for its uh, quick decision making, uh, got through the retendering process in two months once they opened the tender and they uh, approved six new concessions. Japan can't even examine two. Uh, they've had all year to do it, or I think since April or something to do it. So slow. And I repeat my prediction that I made a long, long time ago in Japan. The casino doors will not open until the 2030s. Everybody laughed at me back then, but they're, st they're currently saying 2029. And the way Japan delays things, I think 2030 is uh or to the 2030s is very very realistic what else have we got on the the rundown here i see star entertainment group hit with another 100 million australian dollar fine wow this one from queensland so they've had one from new south wales one from queensland that's a lot of money when the biggest fine previously we ever saw issued in casino history in australia was a million now they've you've copped two hundred million dollar fines wow 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 that's that's really going to make people take stock. And we also saw ASIC, the, the financial regulator in Australia, commence proceedings against 11 star entertainment former executives relating to AML and Junket Association concerns. So the Australian saga rolls on. Uh, the Macau Legislative Assembly is set to vote on the new Junket bill uh, probably today, uh, but all the teeth has gone, all the energy, all the fire has gone out of that now with the crippling of the junkets. I don't think anyone's too worried about that. What a big week. We also saw a chorus uh, for PADCOR change. Another uh, person came, a politician came out in the Philippines saying that the PADCOR's roles as a regulator and an operator should be split and perhaps the operation should be privatised and sold off and PADCOR should stay as a regulator only. This, of course, makes a lot of sense. Uh, but there is concern in the Philippines, PADCOR does generate a lot of cash for the government. So they're, they're sort of working their way through how that might happen. And it will be interesting to see. Uh, Al Tengo, the new uh, head of PADCOR, did say a while back that the idea has some merit. What else have we got? Oh, David Tsai was appointed uh, Crown Perth CEO. He's a former MGM Resorts executive. So his job is to make sure Crown keeps their license, their WA Western Australian license. Also during the week, I calculated, I did an opinion piece or an analysis piece, I should say, calculating that uh, Macau locals contributed around 2.6% of Macau GGR pre-pandemic. And if you think we're headed for post-pandemic stabilised GGR of about a third of what it was pre-pandemic, that means it could be sort of up to 8% could be Macau locals. So that is a market segment to be aware of. 8%, it's not a lot, but it's not uh, worthy of being ignored either. 
We published a, a trade talk with uh, Stuart Hunter, Managing Director of Clarion Gaming, all about Ice London. Yes, the full Ice London is back. The whole IAG team will be there, 7th of February, 2023. We're really excited about it. Please go on to asgam.com, find the story. Ben uh, interviewed, our managing editor, Ben Blaschke, interviewed Stuart H Hunter, all about Ice London set for February 2023. Uh, Resorts World Genting Visitation, the HLIB, that's uh, Hong Leung Investment Bank Research, uh, has come out and said that they think visitation at Resorts World Genting will be uh, more in 2023 than it was in 2019. So that's great news for them if that turns out to be true. Akata Manila, we had a bit of a look through their accounts and it seems that they have said that the so-called illegal occupation of Okada Manila by Kazuo Okada and his associates cost 12 million US dollars in various expenses. So that was a pricey uh, conflagration, conflagration, what's that word, for them. Uh, and an interesting story uh, on Thursday, a former Thai government advisor, Siapol Po Anan, um, for the Thai government, advising them about gaming, has been jailed for 54 years uh, for illegal gaming uh, related and AML related uh, uh, indiscretions. Uh, what else? Uh, the World Series of Poker is back a full force next year. Uh, Caesars announced that it will run from the 30th of May to the 18th of July with the main event between the 3rd and the 6th of July. And I, I will try and get there. I'm really excited about that because I've missed the past three years because of the pandemic. And normally I play that event, the 10,000 US dollar entry uh, main event. So I'm very much hoping to do that in 2023. And 2023 is going to be a big year for IAG. I'm still in Macau and will be in Macau for a while doing internal stuff through December and a bit of January. But in probably late January, I'll hit the road. Got to be in London 7th of February and be on the road pretty much for the whole year. Come, Of course, coming back to Macau while I'm on the run for the whole year. Hopefully there'll be no quarantine by then next year. And it's going to be a very, very exciting year for IAG, a very, very exciting year for the industry, and hopefully a very, very exciting year for you. So Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Holidays, whatever you want to call it. Have a great new year, and we'll see you in the, in the new year. IAG uh, closes at the end of this week. We have our traditional second half of December break. We will be back on, I think it's Tuesday, the 3rd of January, 2023. So enjoy the break, enjoy the holidays, and we'll see you next year. Have a great time, and thanks for all your support this year. Bye for now. Run.